Pokemon, Pokemon, oh how you're diverse. From flappies with wingies to groundies in the dirts. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave poems to poets. I think instead I'll do what I do best, and that is explaining Pokemon typing. And next up is the ground type Pokemon. It's odd to think that ground is an original typing. It's not a special case like dark or fairy, added in for balancing and fluff. No, ground was in the original game. I'd like to think that they had to fill 15 types because that's one less than two bytes of data, but who knows. But when it comes to typing, ground has always been the underdog of the elemental types. I mean, that is until Landorus came in and ruined the whole competitive meta and basically made high-end Pokemon team design boring. And that's a lot of hoopla, if you ask me. But we're not here to discuss meta. We are here to discuss the inspiration and design of all of the ground type Pokemon. So what makes a Pokemon ground type? Is it a way of life or is it the ability to spray sand? And come to think of it, why is ground even different than rock? type. When you really get down to it, rocks are just compacted minerals while the ground is the same minerals but less compacted. Ugh. Think dirt, sand, dust, loose soil, small rocks like gravel. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and go over all of the ground type Pokemon regardless of this confusion. Like normal, rather than going through by Pokedex number, we're going to split them up into a few groups based on similar explanations and go from there. First up, we have Pokemon that live underground or frequently burrow into the ground. These are all ground type because of their entire way of life. Frequently, if not always, underground. You probably haven't heard of them. Let's start with Sand Shrew and Sand Slash. These little dudes love to hide in the soft sands of the deserts they inhabit, waiting for their prey to come near. The brick pattern on Sand Shrew supposedly is camouflage, used to blend in with the brickwork of the ancient temples they dig around in in the desert. Diglett and Dugtrio, both Alolan and normal forms, love to burrow underground and dig for food and protection. They spend their whole lives at least halfway in there. And did you know that Diglett can retract its head back into the ground? at the speed of light? That's right, the speed of light. Old school Pokemon are pretty crazy when you think about it. And since nobody has seen the bottom of a Diglett, it is somewhat theorized that when they go into the ground, they actually become dirt, which sounds crazy, but it would also explain their magical speed underground. Drillbur and Excadrill are based off of moles, if that wasn't obvious by the brown coloration, cylindrical body, pointed nose, and oh, oh yeah, and the huge shovel-like hands. How could I forget those? They turn into a drill when they clamps them together and spins. It's really Dumb, I love it. And some of them can dig at speeds of 30 miles an hour, which is absolutely ridiculous. But I still think Diglett has them beat just a bit. Digger's B is a rabbit that packs a powerful ear? Yeah. Those ears are actually huge muscular arms, complete with the little elbow thingy. See, right there. Interestingly, it uses these arms, or ears, to excavate and dig tunnels, and that's probably why they're all dirty all the time. Ninkata is based off of the cicada insect. If you've seen the BBC shows, then you probably know that some of these insects burrow and live underground for 17 years. Solid. So they for sure are ground type because of this. Also, the Pokedex entry states that they dig nests under trees to get new nutrients from them. As for Nidoqueen and Nidoking, you wouldn't guess it from their ability to stand on hind legs, their large stature and multiple spines, but these Pokemon do in fact burrow. Nidoqueen is known for digging burrows for its young and fiercely protecting them. They also have very tough, rough scales. You could say that they are as tough as the earth. And plus, digging burrows to house themselves and their young would take quite a bit of mastery of the ground and how it works, seeing as they are like four foot on average. They would need to dig huge holes that still support their weight on the top. It got like dirt and rock rebar in there or something. So that's it for Pokemon that are excellent at digging and burrowing in the ground, and that being the origin of their typing. This mastery of dirt, soil, and sand would be why they have the ground typing. And I guess that's all typing is, really. Being able to master, use, or become the elements you are a master of. Second up are Pokemon that have ground-like properties, like rough skin, or they commonly have dirt or mud on them as an extra layer of protection. Some of them still cross into the previous category though, but, you know. Organization's hard. Cubone and Marowak both wear a skull of their deceased mother, whatever that mother may be. Sadly, this little factoid is apparently the only bit of interest Cubone and Marowak have because the Pokedex does not shed much light on anything else about them. It gives no information at all about why it's ground type either. It doesn't even learn many ground type moves. Maybe it's due to these Pokemon living in dry savanna lands, or maybe it's due to their brownish color, or maybe the skull is just really, really dusty. 
Hmm, those are all really dumb reasons. Though interestingly, every bone-related Pokemon move like Bone Club, Bone Meringue, and Bone Rush are ground-type as well. Perhaps Game Freak used the logic that bones are often buried in the ground, and as they decay, they turn into dust and return to dirt. Thus, bones are ground-type. There you go. It's a lot better than making a whole new type, like a bone type or something. Fanpy and Donphan are both kinda hard to pick out why they're ground too. Fanpy digs small holes near rivers for shelter and loves to dry themselves off with dirt baths, much like how real African elephants dust themselves to protect themselves from the sun. But besides this factoid, there's no real reason for Fanpy to be ground type. In fact, Fanpy can't even learn any ground type moves without the help of man-made TMs, meaning it should probably be normal type. But hey, it digs. And it has tough skin, I guess. So it's ground, sure. Dawn Fan makes more sense, though. It continues to do more of the same things as Fanpy, and it is noted that it frequently clears mudslides off of pathways, possibly showing off its ground like abilities. Most noteworthy, though, is how low to the ground it is, especially when it rolls itself up and basically becomes a tire. In order to roll on the ground at high speeds like this, you need to know the way the ground tends to work very well. Trapinch, Vibrava, and Flygon are based off of Antlions a ground-dwelling insect that digs a pit in soft dirt or sand and then uses that as a trap to catch other insects. This line of Pokemon gets the ground type from this larval form of Trapinch, and it basically just keeps the ground type as Vibrava and Flygon. Flygon, however, is also known as the Desert Spirit, due to its wings creating a song-like melody along with its ability to whip up sandstorms constantly. Although, sandstorm is a rock move for whatever reason. Though there are also some dragonflies known as sand dragons, and sand is on the ground, usually. This one's reasonings beyond Trap Inch is pretty weak, besides being based on the antlion, I guess. Sandile, Crocorock, and Crocodile are shifty crooks. Shifty much like the sand they live in. Unlike most crocodiles, there is one species in Africa that digs, burrows, and thrives in sand or soft soil. This came about as the rivers they live in sometimes dry up during the dry season, so they had to make do and learn some new things. These particular crocs are definitely the basis for the crook line. Rhyhorn, Rhydon, and Rhyperior were basically fully explained in the rock type video, you can click here to see that. There, we explained that they aren't actually rock. And, you guessed it, their second type ground is wrong also. Well, not really. Rather, it's just a really weak connection again. Rhyhorns are ground because of the area they live in and the habits they show. Like most rhinos, this line lives in the savanna and loves to roll in the mud. Yep, they get their rock type from their rock-like hide that they then cover in mud to possibly kill parasites on their body. And this muddiness, along with them being pretty darn close to the ground, equals them being ground type too. Or perhaps their hide is somewhere in between ground hardness and rock hardness. So they're like, both of them. Hmm. Gligar and Gliscor are both based off of the scorpion fly. Yes, the bug from your nightmares. Pokedex entries state that it hops along the ground and it likes to glide from their cliffside nests, which are just holes in the cliff. So, underground burrows. Gligar, despite its wings, are actually unable to fly on their own. Instead, they just fall with style. So it's like a grounded bat flying squirrel thing. It can only glide, hence the name. Torterra is pretty self-explanatory. There's a bunch of terra on this tort. It has enough dirt or ground on its shell that a tree has sprouted up on it. I mean, how else could a plant grow on an animal? <laughs> Mudbray and Mudsdale are both donkey horse things that love to root around in the mud. This mud is also used as a grip for its legs, to help give it more traction due to its job of pulling huge loads. And Mudsdale, well, they eat dirt. And they spit it all over things like themselves and walls, because they're just that kind of Pokemon. Burmy and Wormadam, both specifically with the sandy coat that it uses as defense, is a bagworm that uses things in its environment to create a shell for it to live in. This one just so happens to be in a desert, or possibly a beach, so it created a sandy house. Now for some mud Pokemon. These Pokemon are ground type secondarily, and are water type primarily. And the reason they aren't just water type is because they just love the mud so much, be it a muddy puddle or just mud at the bottom of a body of water. It's just so great. Wooper and Quagsire are based off of a very large salamander known as the giant salamander. This line loves to live in marshes and quagmires, large swampy bodies of muddy water and soft ground. They just love to bury themselves in the mud, which is just like Stunfisk. It also buries itself under the mud. This way, it can become one with the mud. Feel the mud. Be the mud and wait for prey to get close enough for it to strike without warning. 
Fish gotta eat. Also, fun fact, the Pokedex thought that this was a very important bit of knowledge that you should know about. The skin of a Stunfisk is so strong, a sumo wrestler can step on it and it won't be hurt. You know, because I measure durability by how many sumos can step on it. I guess that means that Stunfisk is as tough as the ground, eh? Since sumos are able to step on the ground too and, it, and the ground is fine usually. Marshtomp and Swampert both find their home in marshlands and swamps, if the names didn't give that away. It is also said that Marshtomp is able to swim through mud fast than water, so either it's a terrible swimmer, or it just has some mastery over the ground more so than a mastery of water. Some, like, weird ground powers. Barboach and Wishcash are based off of catfish, which just love to live on or under a layer of mud at the bottom of a river. Pretty simple. Gastrodon is kind of a quandary. Pretty much the only reason it's ground type is because they are based off of a sea slug, a water-dwelling creature that lives out its life on the ground of the ocean. Now I know some of you are going to say that sea slugs can swim, and you'd be right. But it just so happens that the two slugs that Gastrodon is based off of don't. They're just on the seafloor, stuck to the ground. Hence the ground typing. Palpitoad and Seismitoad also live in marshlands and swamps, and using these large sacks on their bodies, they can vibrate at such a rate that they can create huge waves in the muddy water, or even create an earthquake. Next are Pokemon that are ground type due to the area that they live in, mainly regions like savannas and plains. They use their environment for protection, or as tools to capture their prey. Now for Gibble, Gabite, and Garchomp. First we have Gibble, who loves to dig and play in the dirt, the sand, the dust, the mud, whatever they happen to be close to, which is most commonly the ground, since they are just so short. Gabite is also known to dig, but it digs with a purpose, for buried treasure and gems. Much like a true dragon, as they just love to hoard treasure. Garchomp then is more of the same. They mainly live in caves under the ground and like to dig. Plus, this whole line is based on the idea of land sharks, a mythical animal that is literally a shark but on the land instead of in the water. And what is the land made of? The ground. But hey, that's just a theory. Now for Swinub, Pillowswine, and Memoswine. Swinub is a cute little guy that loves to dig and wallow in mud or dirt looking for anything it can eat. It also has tiny, tiny stubs for legs, making it super close to the ground. It and the ground become one. Pillowswine is the same, and it actually eats the dirt too, meaning it is even closer to being one with the ground. Got all that tasty dirt on their insides, yum. That is until it evolves and gets real legs. But Memoswine also digs and chucks up huge rocks with its tusks. It's quite powerful. Larvitar is supposedly able to eat an entire mountain's worth of dirt and minerals before it will evolve into Pupitar, which is then buried deep beneath the ground until it itself evolves and then loses the ground typing. But if you literally eat dirt and dig through a mountain, then yeah, you're obviously made of ground, so ground type. Numal and Camerupt are both ground camels that love fire. In fact, they have magma inside of them. And what is magma? Well, you you guessed it, soft rock, and soft rock is basically ground. They eat the ground and stuff too to make that magma inside of them, and they also love to just sit around volcanoes and let volcanic ash fall on them, which I'm not sure if that helps their ground typingness, but eh, it's a fun fact. Groudon should be obvious. I mean, the name pretty much has ground in it. Plus, it's the legendary Pokemon of the ground. It created the ground on the earth, and it is constantly at war with Kyogre, which is the Pokemon which created the sea. Groudon is a master of land and can move continents, and in its omega form is also a master of magma, being both ground and fire type. And magma is what makes the ground, bubbling up from the ocean depths to create new continents and islands. So again, it's pretty self-explanatory. And now we reach Landorus again. Where do we even start with this dude? First off, I've never been a fan of the nature trio, and most of all, Landorus. And what kind of nature is just flying, electric, and ground anyway? Well, Landorus's name basically explains it. He is ground due to his mastery over the ground. It is said that just his presence is enough to make the entire land fertile and lush. He gives new life to the soil that he comes close to, so he is definitely related to the ground and the land as a whole. Kind of like his name suggests. And finally, after listing all of those Pokemon that are not actually the ground, but rather just live around the ground or might have a few ground powers, we reach Pokemon that actually are ground or use ground internally. Hippopotas and Hippowdon both spew out sand that they use to keep the germs off of themselves. Uh, 
<laughs> what? Well, that's, that's what the Pokedex says, not me. I don't even know. Can they spew sand at such an accuracy they can kill individual germs? I don't... Uh. And also, instead of perspirating, they release sand out of their pores. So this sand really is just sweat. And that's terrifying. Imagine what that feels like. Ugh. And when evolved into Hippowdon, it stores sand inside of its body for use in creating small sandstorms. Which again, is a rock type move. So, I, I don't know. Ball toy and clay doll are both based off of clay dolls. And you guessed it, they are both made of clay, which is a type of ground. Sandy Gast and Palo Sand are literal piles of sand. Some kid at some point made a sand castle, and a passing by ghost just happened to possess it. So it is now literally sand. So literally the ground. Golette and Golurk are as the name suggests. They are golems. Now if you don't know what a golem is, let me explain. Take a non-living material of some sort and shape it into a humanoid figure, and then give life to it through some magical means. In the case of these Pokemon, they seem to be made from ceramic armor, made from soft clay, to be exact. In Hebrew mythology, which is the origin of the golem, clay was best for making golems as you were able to infuse magic to it as it hardens, unlike iron or steel that are hard and repel magic. Clay is natural and easy to work with. Some myths even state that it actually has to be clay or mud, as no other material would accept the life-giving magic. Geodude, Graveler, and Golem seem to be ground type based off of where they live, as their Alolan forms lose the ground type in favor of electric, though the rock type remains, which is likely because of the fact that they are literally rocks. Rock type and ground type seem to go hand in hand, as after all, rocks wear down and break down and then the ground is left over. Graveler is the most obvious ground type in the trio, as he's made up of loose pea gravel. They also all live in mountainous areas and hide amongst the dirt and rocks. Golem is likely full of dirt, clay, and rocks and stuff, and Geodude is... He's Geodude. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. Onyx and Steelix, I think, could go into the previous category, as they are both able to tunnel through the ground at rapid speeds, but they may also be part ground or have ground within them. We really don't know that as a fact, though, just some theories. They have rock or steel outer shells, but then they are likely filled with gravel or dirt innards, maybe some crystals. And lastly, we have Zygarde, the guardian of the ecosystem and protector of the Earth. It makes sense for it to be the ground type, as most of the Earth and the ecosystem relies on the ground being there, and being healthy. Zygarde is also sort of able to see or feel through the ground, as if it is perfectly one with the Earth itself. Truly, the master of the ground element overall. Groudon can suck it. So there you have it. Ground type Pokemon explained. The vast majority of them are in fact not actually made of ground, but rather, being ground type seems to primarily just mean that they spend a lot of their time in, under, and around the ground. Their lives revolve around dirt, sand, and soil. And it also adds some meta to the gameplay. So, there's that. So, if you liked this video, be sure to check out the rest of the types we've done so far, and tell me down below what type I should cover next. Also, hey, I don't feel like I say this enough, but thank you. Thanks so much to all of you. The support you guys give makes this whole series, heck, this whole channel truly worth doing. And an especially special thank you to the Patreon supporters. I still think it's crazy what you guys are doing, but it really helps everything on this channel happen, and I am eternally grateful for that. A lot more changes and tweaks are happening in the near future, and it is all thanks to the amazing support of everyone, especially you, because you watched this video all the way through. Thank you so, so much.